Back to Secret Weapons, and today we are taking a look at Habit by Chase Bliss. I guess I should say, welcome to part one of the demo and review for Habit by Chase Bliss. Habit is the new digital delay uh, echo collector from Chase Bliss, and essentially what you have here is a delay pedal in three parts. Uh, you have a standard digital delay with up to 60 seconds of delay time. Uh, infinite repeats without oscillation for kind of Frippertronics style looping. You then have a series of modifiers that can be applied to your delay line uh, in the form of two banks with three effects each. Uh, all of these effects are taken from Chase Plus Audio's blooper uh, looping pedal. And then the, you have an internal always listening memory that is essentially a three minute tape loop uh, that exists in between your input signal and your delay feedback loop. And the way that you interact with that is your spread and scan controls, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we've divided this video up into two parts uh, for the sake of time and for the sake of clarity. Uh, and because I think to really get a strong handle on what Habit is capable of, I think it just requires a really focused look uh, at this pedal divided into two sections. So in this video, part one, we are going to look at Habit as a delay pedal. We are not going to engage with the spread or scan knobs in this video. Uh, if you're looking for those specifically, check out part two. Uh, it should be out. Um, I'll, I'll be posting it a day after this one. So if it's not out yet, apologies, but it's coming very soon. Otherwise, you can click anywhere in here or in the description box down below to jump over to that one. But today we are looking at 
have it as a delay pedal. We're going to be using a fairly simple and straightforward set of effects in this video. Uh, we are looking at the delay, which is essentially the top three knobs on here, level, repeats, and size. Size being your, uh, your tempo. Um, you can also control that with your tap tempo down below. And then we are going to bring in our modifiers in this video as well to see how the modifiers and the delay line play together to create a lot of very interesting and useful uh, delay sounds, even outside of the kind of like long form three minute looping capacity that the habit has. Despite cutting this into two parts, both these videos seem like they're going to still be fairly lengthy. And uh, that's because the habit is no joke. Uh, I think I have it here somewhere. Here we go. This is the field guide to Habit. This is the manual that comes with Habit when you buy it. And for context, this really wonderful, very information dense book is 51 pages long. Technically 52 if you include the notes section in the back. Uh, I've had this for a little over a month now. Uh, I've put a fair amount of time in with it, and I felt like I started to get a meaningful handle on what this thing is capable of in about the last week. My recommendation, honestly, if you pick up a habit, is start with the delay side of things. Start simple, start, start clean right there, get comfortable with how the modifiers work, get comfortable with how that feed control works, and then you can dive into the spread control and the scan control and the dip switches and everything else. So in keeping with that, we are going to stick with the delay stuff for this video. And then in the next video, we will jump into spread scan and kind of tie everything together and use this as a like generative serendipitous accidental songwriting machine, which uh, I really, really dig. So before we jump into the pedal board part of this video and start getting into some sound samples, uh, I just wanna say one, this thing is great. It's really cool. I really like it. Uh, I think it operates in a very different space than Blooper does, despite it having those same modifiers. I think that it functions as its own thing because it being a delay first uh, device and offering a dry kill with the ability to take your time to zero allows you to kind of use those modifiers as somewhat real time effects, which is something that you couldn't really do on Blooper. Um, in the field of this being a digital effect, I also want to say it's very, very different from Mood. I don't think that Chase Bliss is retreading any ground in any meaningful way in this, in this release, which is really exciting. It's really great to see Chase Bliss always pushing the envelope. I think that Scott and Joel and Tom and everybody over there are brilliant, and I think they did a great, great job with Habit. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into our sound samples. Let's look at those delay modes, and then in the next video, we will cover the deeper, crazier offerings of habits. I think the easiest way to unpack exactly what habit is for and what habit is capable of is by breaking this section of the video up into a few different parts. We're gonna start off by combining the uh, basic delay functionality alongside the modifiers. So we'll start off by looking at the habit as a basic three knob tap tempo delay using the level repeats size and tap. Then we will bring in the modifier A and B banks with modifiers one, two, and three, and that modifier knob. Uh, before we jump into the habit sounds, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain. I am playing a J Massis Jazzmaster loaded up with Restrettos by Lambertone Pickups. Uh, we are running into the Cali 76 compressor by Origin FX, the Bondi Sick As Overdrive, the Benson preamp, the generation loss from Chase Plus Audio and Cooper FX, uh, at which point we go into the habit. From there, we go to the Maris Polymoon, the Strymon Flint, which we have set as a nice subtle plate reverb. We're going out to the Walrus Canvas DI slash LI uh, into Universal Audio's Luna DAW. Uh, this is our bass tone that we're going to kind of keep going for the entirety of this video is the Cali 76, the Sick As, and the Flint. This is what that sounds like. <laughs> I should mention, uh, for amplifiers, we are running into the new Benson Chimera plugin. We are just using the Chimera Amp Sim, the cabinets, and a little bit of that Tallbird spring reverb in stereo at the very end of our whole chain. <laughs> Now 
let's bring in the habit set as a basic digital delay. So the size control and the tap tempo both set your time for your delay. So fast tap. Uh, slow tap. Or this size knob up here can take you all the way down to next to zero. Or all the way up to a full 60 seconds of delay time. While we wait for that to come around, the uh, level control never goes full wet. There's a kill dry dip switch for that. And the repeats doesn't oscillate, but it can go to infinite, which basically means it'll just uh, kind of like function as a sound on sound Frippertronics style looper. You'll notice we are still waiting on that. Uh, that first delay note to come back around again. And as that plays back, one of the interesting things about the habit uh, as a digital delay is that it doesn't uh, react to uh, si uh, tempo changes, to us, changes to that size control via tap tempo or size in any uh, like pitch shifting ways. Uh, you can get some really cool stuttery, choppy delay repeats by changing that size knob as you have your playback going. A lot of interesting, unpredictable. It's a little bit like uh, like having a tape loop that you randomly resize without having to stretch it or change the speed to cause pitch shifting. You just kind of get these artifacts lost in the space that used to have uh, a recording time that no longer has it. Back to a normal delay. So nice, normal, simple delay. Let's go ahead and talk about modifiers. The center toggle switch on the Habit uh, has a center position of off, which is no modifiers, clean digital delay playback only. Uh, a left position called A and a right position called B. 
Uh, they basically each store three modifiers unique to each side, uh, giving you a total of six ways that you can manipulate the wet signal, uh, those repeats in the habit. On bank A, your three modifier options are step speed, stability, and trimmer. Uh, step speed is going to be quantized directional playback. Uh, basically, you can go forward or reverse depending on if you go uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, but it's going to be quantized to fifths and octaves to keep things very easily musical and easily accessible. So you're not kind of running up against, you know, either the smooth speed that is available on the B side, which can create a lot of like totally out of key dissonance or the kind of complexity of having like, you know, like a fourth or a third as you're running a scale. Um, it allows you to just kind of get lost in the improv side of things without worrying about too much dissonance, which is really handy. And uh, it's worth noting right now that uh, all of these are brought over in some capacity from Blooper, Chase Bliss's uh, looping pedal. Uh, and step speed was a go-to setting of mine on the Blooper for its uh, ability to very quickly and easily move from uh, direction to direction and interval to interval without losing a sense of musical cohesion. Stability is uh, essentially the stability knob from the blooper. It wasn't a modifier. It was just the tape age state that the looper, and in this case, the delay repeats exist within. Uh, if you go uh, counterclockwise from noon, you introduce uh, wow and flutter and filtering and all of that kind of like tape age with no additional noise added in. But if you go clockwise from noon, you get uh, some white noise from old tape as well, which uh, it's great to have both options. And I tend to like both depending on what I'm going for vibe wise. And then modifier three is trimmer, which basically as you turn clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, cuts off progressively more of your the front of your signal or the back of your signal, allowing you to get kind of stuttered, uh, rhythmically repeating delays that aren't the entirety of your original signal. Let's start with step speed and kind of run through each of these a little bit. For step speed, we'll start moving forward at close to unity. <laughs>
A2 right here. Uh, this is stability, and this is uh, probably the most instantly and widely useful modifier in this thing. Instant chorusing, instant warmth, instant vibe. The stability algorithm is written so well in blooper and, and, and adapted so well for habit. can get really uh, seasick if you if you crank it. And then moving the other direction clockwise from noon. You can hear that white noise. We'll try our very best to avoid, um, we're going to try our best to avoid uh, too many derailments and tangents, uh, including but not limited to jumping ahead in feature set and complexity, because this video is going to be long enough as it is. However, uh, this is going to be our first in a series of progressively more uh, infuriating side tangents. Uh, the white noise and the warble and the vibe of the A3 or the A2 stability modifier is really cool. Let's go ahead and, and, uh, and engage our kill dry. Uh, so the, all, we're only hearing our wet effects and let's take that size to zero and see if we can get a really cool lo-fi guitar kind of in that vein of something like the generation loss uh, out of the habit. There we go. Uh, there is because the, the the because the size doesn't go to actual zero, um, like a hundred percent unity. You get a slight bit of like tangible delay when you strike your string uh, with your size at zero. Uh, but in terms of kind of the performance, you can't really tell. It's so close to zero, but you will feel it when playing. But this will give you a really cool, basically lo-fi dry tone. <laughs> Introduce it with way more pitch shifting and less noise. Uh, and in, in, as long as we're in this tangent. Let's bring in the poly moon with a nice wide stereo image and
let's jump over to mode three. So with trimmer, uh, when you go counterclockwise, you cut off the end of your trail. When you go clockwise, you cut off the start. Here, let's lock something into that full. So it doesn't leave dead space in between those trimmed moments. It actually truncates uh, what's left into like like a ripple delete in um, in Premiere Pro or a video editing software if that makes any sense to people. But like you you delete as part of that in that the start of that signal and it compresses it. Or cutting off the off the end of it instead. As you can see, size and modify in this mode really play into each other very aggressively. The amount you're cutting relative to the kind of what can be considered as the buffer size uh, really does give you a lot of different, very interesting rhythmic capacities. Let's go ahead and try something that I haven't tried before, which is let's take the size to 60 and then just kill the modifier all the way down so that you like are still eating up most of that 60 seconds uh, by, by just removing it.
Jumping over to bank B in the modifiers, we have smooth speed, filter, and dropper. Uh, smooth speed, much like step speed, is the ability to, to go into reverse uh, in the counterclockwise side of the sweep and forward in the clockwise. Uh, but instead of your speed being quantized to fifths and octaves, this is smooth speed. Uh, you can use a tiny bit for things like uh, forward or reverse choruses, which can be really interesting, or you can use it for just uh, like record stops and that kind of thing, uh, which is really interesting. So this will also be where we first introduce the expression control uh, for some for some kind of added usefulness and nuance out of the smooth speed. So let's start by kind of exploring the space and then find something kind of practical and interesting we can do with it. So at noon, this one is completely stopped. So yeah, smooth speed. You can get some real like weird chorusing sounds with it. So much like the smooth speed in the blooper, uh, I don't find myself using it a ton with one specific uh, exception, which is as that kind of like cool record stop kind of thing. So let's go ahead and put our modifier right at noon so that our heel down position is this point of no delay whatsoever. So what we've done here, as you can see, is we have flipped the dip switch to control the modify. Uh, and we have set the sweep to go to the top instead of the bottom. And I've reversed the polarity on my uh, expression pedal because I needed to, so that my toe down is the top. So let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like. So I'm in heel down position and you can hear that there's no delay, except for some very low stuff. But, And so we have switched the uh, the throw to go reverse now from noon. Thank you. 
Jumping over to modifier number two, we have the filter control. Uh, this is a low pass filter to the left and a, and a high pass filter to the right. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. <laughs> So this is a good time to actually make the change from the out to the in modes down on this bottom right toggle switch. We've been in out mode this whole time, allowing all of our modifiers to kind of maintain their first pass characteristic uh, on every repeat, basically meaning every repeat doesn't feed back into the modifier. It just exists as it currently stands. It's why the pitch shifting doesn't cascade upwards. Uh, it's why the choppiness of the, uh, other, of, of the loop stuff doesn't get uh, progressively shorter. It's why the uh, choppiness of that trimmer doesn't get progressively shorter. It is just taking the existing modifier and applying it cleanly to each repeat. But if we make this jump over to in, you will notice on this low pass filter, let's take it back to uh, normal and just apply a slight low pass. So noon with no low pass. Apply just a little bit. You can hear that little bit of darkness, that little bit of resonance. If we change this from out to in, that effect will be applied to each repeat uh, over and over again. Which means you will hear it get progressively darker, but also a little bit more resonant each time, allowing the effects to build. hear the, uh, the like the resonant hot low pass filter and what's interesting is if you make changes to that modifier as it goes you can have it resonate in different places as it as it builds up And what's interesting is what, it, what that means is you can actually do things like change that modifier as it goes and, and apply new repeats and new changes. Uh, you heard that kind of like runaway, almost oscillation. It's one of the only ways to get this thing to appear to oscillate in some way is to let the resonant low pass filter uh, kind of build upon itself and progressively push that certain frequency louder and louder until it starts clipping. But if you take uh, that modifier and you change it as that decay happens, you can actually allow it to apply different areas of resonance. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, this is B3, this is dropper. So you hear a little bit of a little bit of inconsistency in those repeats. Uh, counterclockwise, you're getting random pieces of the playback memory lost. Uh, and clockwise, you're getting consistent patterned dropouts. So and the further you go, the more you get. So So we have a little loop right there. And you'll hear that consistent pattern of dropouts. And as you go counterclockwise, you'll get more random ones. Let's wrap up this section of the video, the, uh, the kind of basic delay modifier parameter section, uh, by doing something a little bit inventive with what we've covered so far. Uh, we're going to, we're not going to bring the expression pedal back in, but what we're going to do is we're going to change that feed control back to in so that we are print, essentially printing modifiers onto our delay repeats uh, as they go. So what I want to do turn off the repeats in general, or turn off the uh, the modifiers in general, what we're going to do is we're going to take, not a super long loop, but an actual like little bit of a loop uh, that will capture. We've got the repeats at max for kind of infinite uh, Fibertronic style looping. And then we will take our size nice and high and we'll just, we'll capture a simple little pretty loop and then we'll start applying modifiers using that in control so that uh, all of the modifiers as we apply them get printed on to what we're doing.
Thank you.